Thank you for being here again for um, another threat that we have coming our way, a uh, tropical storm, which is expected to turn into a, a hurricane, um, Sally. So I have with me, and I'm honored to have with me, our chairman for our Jefferson Parish Council, Chairman Ricky Templet, along with our councilman at large for Division B, Scott Walker, our councilwoman for District 5, Jennifer Van Rankin, along with many others who are going to speak today, our director of emergency management, Mr. Joe Valiente, our uh, Jefferson Parish School Superintendent, Dr. James Gray, our director of public works, Mark Drews, our director of drainage, Mitch Terrio. We are also honored to be with um, Entergy, Mr. Patrick Hamby, as well as our public service commissioner, Mr. Eric Scrametta. Um, from the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority West, we have Nick Calley, as well as Scott Burke, who was the board president. Our Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority East, we're joined by Antoine Harris. Um, and as well as our first responder um, contingency, our chief of East Bank Consolidated Fire Department, Chief Dave Tibbetts, and our director of the West Bank Fire Services, Brian Adams. So with that, we will say that um, the forecast since yesterday has not been good for us. This storm has shifted west, which is, of course, more problematic for us, especially as it relates to storm surge and our lower-lying areas of Grand Isle, Lafitte, Barataria, Crown Point, um, as well as the Lake Pontchartrain area. So we're expecting storm surge. We're expecting rain and flash flooding. With the wind, the high winds that we're expecting, we will have power outages that we should be expecting, as well as minor structural problems and fallen trees that may block roadways. Yesterday, I signed an emergency declaration at about 6, 6.45, 7.45 time frame. Um, so that was uh, submitted yesterday. As of this morning, Grand Isle is under an, a mandatory evacuation as of 9 a.m. this morning. Um, also, Mayor Lafitte, we have been in communication with throughout the day. There will be a mandatory evacuation for the Lafitte area, as well as all those lower-lying areas, Lafitte, Bar Barataria, Crown Point, starting tomorrow at noon, tomorrow at noon for Lafitte. Uh, Mitch and Mark will give more detail, but in Jefferson Parish, we have 192 pumps, 71 pump stations. We enter like we did the last storm at 100% capacity. So kudos to them and, and all the maintenance they've been doing. So we're entering this threat at 100% pump capacity. Um, today, we are out doing those things that we, we do, clean catch basins, flushing drain lines, all of those items. Um, 2020 has been a difficult year for all of us. I know we're tired, we're weary, and that's what I want to talk about today. That doesn't matter. What happened in the past doesn't matter. We handle every threat the same. We go through the preparations. You cannot say, I'm tired of this, I don't want to do it. We all live in, in a dangerous area for storms. This is the height of our season. We need to do whatever it takes to deal with the storm and the threat in front of us. It does not matter what happened in the past. It does not matter what kind of year we've had um, because that doesn't determine we need to be as prepared as we can for the threat ahead of us. And that's certainly the position we're taking in the parish. And I want to stress that's the position that we all should be taking. I know we're tired. We had um, a full year dealt with us. It doesn't matter. We still have a major threat in front of us. We need to do all those things that we've done, even though we've just done them. We still need to do them, okay? So um, citizens should be preparing. We want our drainage system. We have invested a lot of money in our drainage system, but it's to move water. It does not move debris. It does not move leaves. If, if that stuff is in the system, then it can't move as much water. So we need you to clear those catch basins out, take that debris, put it in the garbage. Do not shove it down that system. Uh, we want to give our drainage system the best chance as we can, as all of us have invested in, all of us as taxpayers have invested in, to move the water as quickly as possible. We want to remove the loose limbs on our trees. We want to bring in all our outside furniture. Mine's already in. I didn't take mine back outside. It's in from last time. Uh, hopefully that's the case for many of you all. Um, tie down your loose items. Um, bring in your garbage bins and, re and recycling. We will have service if your service which was scheduled to t tomorrow that will resume and they're going to be out there until weather permits so after they pick up tomorrow then bring those bins in okay do your errands today um, so when this happens we can all stay off the street go get your water your food your medication your pet supplies uh, we might and, and energies here along with mr scrimetta we might have some outages have your 
batteries and your flashlights ready. So all those things that we know how to do. What concerned me when I listened to the weather briefing this morning is that they were very clear to say that this is a slower than normal storm. So that's not good for us. We like storms to move through quickly. It is a slower than normal storm. And what's critical there is if we have banding that hovers over us in a slow moving storm, that is a much higher risk of flash flooding, um, roads being inundated with water. We have open canals, many open canals in Jefferson Parish. It is a deadly situation to have. Uh, it doesn't take a lot for your car to have all wheels get off the road, and then you're floating next to an open canal. Very dangerous situation. So slower than normal storm, expected a lot of rainfall, um, 6 to 12 inches, but possibly if the band ho holds over us, you could get as much as 20 inches of water. We don't know how that's going to happen. We don't want, know what parish it, part of the parish um, might, might have to go through that. So we want to get ready and stay inside through this event, okay? Um, just, just two weeks ago, um, River Ridge, we had five inches of rain in a one and a half hour period, and we had some isolated indoor flooding. So we know how vulnerable we are if the storm um, hangs over us for a while. So if we do have a lot of water in the streets, we need everybody to be patient. We need everybody to allow our drainage system to do work. Again, stay off the roads, avoid driving in flooded areas. Uh, you can't see the road profile. You could get damage to your car. As I said, you could be right next to an open canal. Um, so, and, and worst of all, you could push water into somebody's home that wouldn't ordinarily have had water in their home because you're driving through the neighborhood and causing a wake. So we need to be good neighbors. We need to be good to one another. We need to be respectful. Our emergency operations center will be partially activated tomorrow beginning at 7 a.m. And um, until 5 p.m. And by 5 p.m. tomorrow, we will have a full activation of our emergency operations center. For Jefferson Parish, our government offices are going to close tomorrow at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. will close tomorrow. We will make an announcement um, on the following day tomorrow after the 10 a.m. weather briefing. Um, but transit tomorrow normally ends at 1030 at night. We're going to suspend that service. It'll end at 7 p.m. tomorrow. So transit will run until 7 p.m. Garbage and recycling, we're going to get out as much as we can as weather until weather permits. We're going to try to pick up as much as we can, and government offices close tomorrow at 2 p.m. In terms of COVID testing tomorrow, we, we, Alario is going to be closed, and we had a community testing site that we were scheduled to have tomorrow. That will be closed. So in terms of the parish testing, there will be no COVID testing tomorrow. tomorrow. We want to encourage everybody to stay informed to your local uh, your local TV stations, jeffparish.net, for anything you need for the parish. You can text JP Alert to 888-777. And for our Spanish-speaking citizens, JP Noticias to 888-777, which is a new service that we started this year and, and seems to be um, extremely successful. So we're going to have up a slate of speakers, and then we will be available for questions. I also want to thank Sherry. I forgot to. Um, introduce Sherry, who's become a member of our team this year, unfortunately. Um, I don't say that in a bad way, but we have had a lot of, um, we, I've signed 16 emergency proclamations this year, so it has been a very busy 2020. So Sherry from the Deaf Action Center. So um, with that, I'm going to call up Mr. Um, Joe Valiente, who's the director of our emergency management services. So Joe. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So. Uh, the parish president talked about the threats that uh, Jefferson Parish will be facing over the next 36 hours. And uh, I just wanted to stress on one, the storm surge for the lower, Jefferson, the lower part of Jefferson Parish. They're talking about greater than six feet, possibly up to 10 feet of storm surge for that area. So we've been working closely with Mayor uh, Tim Kerner Jr. from the Lafitte area and Dave Carmondell from Grand Isle. Uh, there's over 100,000 sandbags between both those municipalities. Uh, we pushed extra generators and pumps to both locations, and they should be setting those pumps up as we speak. So we're keeping in very close contact with those two communities because we know how vulnerable they are to storm surges. And then in conjunction with the heavy rain that we're going to receive that was mentioned by the parish president, that, that can only aggravate that uh, situation. I'd like to tell you that we're participating in all the briefings with GOSEP, with the National Weather Service, and then we're conducting our Jefferson Parish leadership uh, conference calls every day, So, and we're fielding questions so that we can make sure that 
We have total situational awareness throughout the entire parish. On the evacuation issues, we have Grand Isle has a mandatory evacuation as of 9 a.m. today. Lafitte is voluntary as, as of today, but tomorrow at noon, Lafitte will go to a mandatory evacuation. So our goal, hopefully, is to get as many people out of those low-lying areas so we can get them away from uh, harm's, harm's way. So with that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, um, we have uh, Councilman Scott Walker, Councilman Jennifer Van Rankin, and our Chairman Ricky Templet. So I'm going to ask our, our Chairman to come up and speak on behalf of the Council. And thank you, Madam President. Uh, wow, what a, what a year, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Uh, most of us feel like we're stuck in that movie Groundhog Day or, uh, or Deja Vu. Uh, but uh, I'm, and actually, this is the second time, too, that with all these storms that are coming forward, that we're having to have a s mandatory evacuation in Lower Jefferson Parish, Crown Point, Grand Isle, Lafitte, and Barataria. Um, but I'm here to say that Jefferson Parish is prepared and ready for the challenge before it. Uh, we roughly have, you heard the parish president say, we roughly have 192 pumps that are at the ready. All our stations are manned and ready to operate. And we have roughly 18 temporary pumps that are in Grand Isle, Lafitte, Barataria, and Crown Point. Uh, the council has been working together and keeping informed, talking to each mayor throughout the parish. Uh, and we're well protected with inside the levee protector system from Lake Pontchartrain to Lafitte area uh, where the um, outside the levee protection system starts at right around Crown Point. Um, I'm excited to be able to say my colleagues have all been staying in touch with the parish president and the EOC and we're looking forward to making sure we try to handle this storm that's coming our way. Please heed all warnings. Uh, I know that you're tired of evacuating, you're tired of going by gas, you're tired of going by fuel for your, your truck or your car, you're buying your groceries, uh, but heed the warnings. Uh, this storm, we have no idea exactly where it's going to go yet. Uh, coming up the Barataria waterway, we'll be shoving a lot of water in Lower Jefferson, Barataria, Crown Point, and Lafitte. Uh, a storm that reminds me of this storm was Isaac in 2012, and it, it sat over us for hours, and Lower Lafitte had six feet of water in it. Uh, in some areas, it pooled up to like 10 feet. So please heed all warnings and evacuate, and please listen to the news, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know there's a lot of questions about school closures in the next day, so with that, Dr. James Gray from the Jefferson Parish School System. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm newly uh, appointed superintendent for Jefferson Parish School System. Uh, this has definitely been an interesting first two months on the job. Um, but one thing that I have to say is for sure that our parents have been extremely patient with us between the pandemic and the storms. We've had to make a lot of adjustments. Uh, so we want to say thank you to you, but specifically uh, more endearing to our teachers and our principals. They've been working 24 hours a day since we started this process in March. The hurricanes just uh, adds another caveat that we have to contend with, but our kids are our primary focus when we make our decisions. The safety of our students' employees is our top responsibility. Based on the anticipated impact of Tropical Storm Sally, all Jefferson Parish public schools and administrative buildings will be closed Monday, September 14th, and Tuesday, September 15th. All school and district activities and events during this two-day period are canceled. Depending upon the impact of the storm, we'll make our additional adjustments especially for our schools in Grand Isle and Lafitte. We will continue to closely monitor the situation and keep our employees and families informed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gray. So in terms of Jefferson Parish, we have a strong public works department. You've met these gentlemen before at our last event. So I want to invite um, Mark Drews, who's the director of our public works department, and Mitch Terrio, who's the director of our drainage department, to talk about our preparations in Jefferson Parish. For Tropical Storm Sally, with regard to public works, we're prepared and ready. And as usual, we're going to rely on our most important asset, which is our employees. We have a significant number of employees. They've been through the hurricanes, Katrina, Rita, Gustav Ike, and all those subsequent storms. Uh, so they're battle-tested and they're ready. With regard to our infrastructure, we're equally prepared. 
uh, our water system. We have East Bank and West Bank treatment plants. They'll be manned before, during, and after the storm. Uh, we have safe houses on site. If necessary, they can go to the safe houses and there's automation there. They can still run the system from the safe houses. Uh, in case of an extended power outage, they have generators, backup generators with a five-day supply of fuel. Our sewer department with its four major treatment plants has similar facilities. They have the backup generators as well with that five-day supply of fuel. Our streets and parkways departments have equipment standing by. They'll be ready after the storm. They have the capability to begin clearing the streets of debris, removing any downed trees, uh, and if necessary, they can put out uh, road closures for flooded streets. In addition, we have a traffic engineering division that will be ready right after the storm that can address any traffic signal outages or any emergency road closures that need to be set up. They have that capability. Uh, with that said, our uh, most important uh, public works for storms typically is our drainage department, and I'm going to turn that discussion over to Mr. Mitch Terrio, our director. Uh, just to, to uh, bring up a few specifics about what we're doing today, we have 10 Vactor trucks. These are the, the big trucks with the water tanks, vacuum hoses, and, and uh, water pressure hoses that are used to clean out or suck out uh, catch basins and drain lines. So we have 10 of those tru trucks, but we also have five or six crews that uh, of people who don't normally do that on a daily basis, uh, but they're in and pick up trucks with garbage bags and shovels. Uh, so we can inspect, you know, several thousand catch basins in a day and clean them as, as, uh, as necessary. As far as the pump stations, uh, again, all, all pumps and, and all personnel are available and ready to go. We'll probably uh, put them in uh, full time in the pump stations beginning tonight. It's a little uh, at midnight tonight. It's a little bit early, but we're going to give them time to double and triple check all of the systems and make sure that we're ready to go. And if we find anything, we'll have time in the morning to uh, to get that to get that taken care of. So, um, as far as the rainfall goes, there's a wide range of possible rainfall totals. Um, you know, we'll. Uh, certainly have every pump available and pump as need be but as the parish president said if, if uh, certain rainfall totals uh, come we will have some high canal levels and probably some significant street flooding hopefully uh, the total rainfall is spread over a long enough time period that that we can handle it and uh, and keep any structure flooding to uh, to a minimum so Thank you, Mitch. As we all know, with a, a hurricane storm and, and the winds, we are vulnerable to um, energy, energy issues. So with that, I want to call up from Entergy, Patrick Hamby, as well as our Public Service Commissioner, Mr. Eric Scrametta. Thank, thank you very much. I'm Patrick Hamby on behalf of Entergy Louisiana. I want to assure everyone that Entergy is storm ready. We were here talking about Marco not too long ago. We've done a dress rehearsal, a dry run, if you will, and we're going through it again. Um, we are moving our equipment to higher ground that's going to be susceptible to all these storm surges and rains and floodwaters and things like that. So we're taking care of that first. We're doing that right now. We're reinforcing our permanent fixed fixtures, which are the substations, things like that, that we cannot physically move. We're putting flood protection in place so that that does not have any damages as well. We are, and this is at a point that I'm going to expand on, we are aligning additional crews to come in with our base load resources that we have, boots on the ground already, so that when we do get the effects of Sally, we're ready to respond when and where we need to respond. So as I mentioned I was going to expand on that. You know, a major part of our process is always getting additional resources in queue, having them ready, ramping up as needed. This is somewhat unique, but I will reassure you we've been there before because we are actively working in Lake Charles right now responding to Laura. The silver lining there is we're 80% through with that restoration event. We've made significant progress. This is our third, starting our third week of restoration efforts over there. What that means for this region is with the significant progress we've made there, we're able to roll off resources and we're moving them into this region as well to assist. We also have our local base crews I mentioned, boots on the ground that are here right now, ready to respond. The third bucket of resources we have are mutual aid resources from our other utilities, Florida Power and Light, Alabama Power, so on and so forth. 
we had actually 25, north of 25 states supporting us with Laura. We have that same support here for Sally as well. That being said, this situation is not new. If you think back to 2005, August 29th, Hurricane Katrina hit. We're still reeling from that, restoring power. September 24th, Rita hits. So the same scenario happened there. We adjusted resources, did not have any issues then. We do not expect to have any issues now. 2008, Gustav, Ike, same situation. We're here today, same situation, different names. We have Laura, we have Sally. We do not anticipate any resource or material problems or roadblocks at this time. The most important thing to do at this moment in time, I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again, is to make a plan to keep your family safe right now. It's not, you can't wait, you have to do it now. It's not a game, this is real. Get your preparations together. You have to remember a category one, a category two storm can cause catastrophic damages. That means widespread power outages, trees on your home potentially, have a plan in place, keep your family safe, act now and get ready. The outages could last for many days. We've experienced that and we are experiencing that in Lake Charles right now. I mentioned we're getting into our third week of restoration efforts there, 80% it has been restored, but again, be prepared. We have a wonderful website, energystormcenter.com. I'll repeat it. It's energystormcenter.com. You can go there and find out what you need to put in an evacuation kit if it becomes that level of a storm. It already is down in the southern portions of the state with mandatory evacuations. Make sure you have what you need when you leave so that you don't get stuck out on the streets without the proper materials for your family. I'd like to talk about a really important tip that we have on the energystormcenter.com. It's generator safety. During these prolonged outage events, many people hook up generators that aren't permanently plumbed to the house. You must look at the manufacturer's instructions, make sure it's installed correctly, put in the appropriate place. Unfortunately, in Lake Charles, there have been many deaths from the deadly placement of a generator, generator that has been very, very unfortunate. So please, energystormcenter.com, there's a big tab, click on it, generator safety, heed those warnings, follow those instructions. In addition to those safety issues and tips, there's also links to keep informed with Entergy via text, email, social media. Be aware of that too, that's a wonderful resource. If we do have outage events and you do evacuate, you can keep in touch with what's going on back home. Please continue to hope for the best, be prepared, and thank you very much. Um, my name is Eric Scrimetta. I'm Public Service Commissioner for District 1. I want to thank President Shang for the opportunity to address you today. Um, and the, one of the reasons why is because of the uh, magnitude of the press that are here today that will cover the entire southeast uh, part of Louisiana because this storm is going to impact uh, virtually every part of southeastern Louisiana. Um, I've taken the opportunity to marshal the assets of all of the utility companies in southeastern Louisiana, uh, Entergy, Clico, and the uh, couple of uh, cooperatives, uh, Demco and Washington St. Tammany Co-op. Uh, the important part about marshaling these assets into a effectively a strike force is to make sure that we get the right number of personnel and have them in place to respond in an adequate and appropriate response. So what we're looking at right now for energy personnel is having an immediate response of about 1,000 personnel with a very short window backup of about 2,000 additional personnel. Uh, Clico is going to have between uh, a minimum of 600 but a maximum of about 800 immediate personnel with the ability to draw more through mutual aid. Uh, Washington State Tammany will have at least 100 personnel on the floor. Uh, they will have the ability to draw back an additional 500. I expect, uh, I haven't had the final numbers from Demco, but Demco is a much larger cooperative, so I expect to have at least double the numbers from them that we're getting from Washington St. Tammany. The important thing is, is that 
uh, we now have in the state of Louisiana, helping in West Louisiana, uh, 29 states and Canada have crews in the state of Louisiana. And uh, the bulk of the, uh, the distribution system is now back in place. We're working on the transmission system. So we have the ability to release uh, additional crews and get them over here in a rapid form as necessary. Now there are some things that the public should take into consideration about as we move through this storm. The first thing, as you've heard some of the other officials state, this is going to be a slow moving storm. When we had Isaac move through before, it actually went across the uh, 60 hour mark and people who had uh, generators ran out of fuel, they had other issues. Um, this one's gonna look like it's gonna be 24 to 36 hours possibly somewhere in that window. The issue that we're gonna face in there is that we look at, uh, and this is a federal regulation, that these uh, folks with these utility companies cannot put people in bucket trucks until the winds drop below 30 miles an hour. Now they can put out crews to clear, clear up debris, they can have scouts out working out where the damage is, but they cannot put a person in a bucket truck and put them up to fix a line until the winds aloft drop below 30 miles an hour. And that could take a while with a slow moving storm. So what I ask you is to provide patience and understanding in this situation. All these people are gonna be here working to provide a restoration of services as best they can. But the single thing you can do best for yourself is to follow the instructions of your local officials, whether they be your parish presidents or your sheriffs or your local emergency responders. And the next thing you need to do is to make sure you have a plan for your families, and whatever that is, to stick to it. So I want to thank you for the opportunity and thank you, President Cheng, for letting me come in and visit today. Thank you, Commissioner Scrimetta. Um, next, if you look at the investments that have been made in our community, especially since Katrina, they have been massive, they have been impressive. Um, this next group of gentlemen is coming up who manages, I, I like to think of it as our perimeter defense against water, whether it's from the lake, the river, the intracoastal waterway. So we'll have um, Mr. Nick Kelly, who's the regional director of the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority West, as well as board president, Mr. Scott Burke. And then we'll, on the east side, we'll have um, Antoine Harris from the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority East. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam President. The Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority West has begun making preparations for closures of all, all floodgates in advance of Hurricane Sally. We will close all of our hurricane protection floodgates beginning tomorrow at 6 a.m. We will also close the Bayou Signet and Harvey Canal sector gates tomorrow afternoon. The floodgates along the Mississippi River will remain open, as well as the gate at LA-45, that's Barataria Boulevard. Closure of the West Closure Complex will be determined later today. For gate close, closure status, please visit our website at www.slfpaw.org. I'll, re I'll repeat, www.slfpaw.org. Thank you. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, my name is Antoine Harris. I'm the Public Information Director for the uh, Flood Protection Authority East. And we've been planning for this storm since uh, last week. Um, right around 6 o'clock this morning, we started closing a number of floodgates throughout the region. That includes the three parishes that we serve. Uh, and that will continue into Monday. Uh, as of right now, we're looking at about a total of 84 gate closures. That number can obviously change as we monitor this storm. Um, as far as Jefferson Parish is concerned, uh, we do not have plans as of now to close uh, Bonneville or Williams. Uh, but again, monitoring will, you know, may or may not change that. Uh, as of Monday morning, all of our pump stations will be manned and uh, operated during the duration of the storm, uh, if need be. And then uh, we also just want to reiterate uh, the confidence we have in the flood defense system. Uh, we do believe it will perform as it was designed. Uh, and for any other updates that you would need from us, you can always go to our website, which is floodauthority.org. Um, and you can also subscribe to our text alerts. Uh, you can text floodgate to 333111 to get updates uh, on our gate closures. So we are prepared. Uh, and thank you, Madam President, for having us. Thank you so much, Mr. Harris. Next, we're going to have our, um, our fire services, our chief of our East Bank Consolidated Fire Chief, Dave Tibbetts 
as well as um, Brian Adams, who's the director of our fire services on the West Bank. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm glad to be here today with Director Adams. Uh, as most other folks have said, we've had an opportunity to prepare in the last couple of weeks and months, and we've done so. Fire departments are prepared. Our boat fleet, small boat fleets are prepared. But what I would like to do is spend a little bit more time on the subject that was brought up. Uh, everyone that watched the news saw the terrible incidents that occurred with the use of generators or the misuse, unfortunately, accidental use of generators. Um, we just want to dig down a little bit on that and let the public know. I'm just asking you not to use a generator or a grill or a camp stove or any gasoline or propane powered, natural gas powered device, especially a generator, anywhere near your home. Even under an eave, the vapors will, will, the fumes, if you will, will get into your home. They don't, they really don't even need to use your HVAC system to be spread around. They'll spread on their own. And the thing that people need to understand these fumes or these vapors do not have an odor. You won't know what's happening. You'll go to sleep. And these, this, this, these fumes, if you will, of vapors will put you into a deeper sleep, and it'll lead to death. So just please, please, I'm, I'm begging the public uh, not to do that. Um, keeping these devices outdoors, away from doors and windows and vents, that these, this could allow the vapors or fumes to enter. Um, and again, just, just be, not, be aware of what the... The manufacturer says the use of this is, and please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So as you've heard just now, we have the direct threats from the weather, and there are many secondary, um, very dangerous activities, whether it's generator use, whether it's fallen trees on houses, whether it's driving through um, high water in the street. So please be mindful of all the many threats that this storm um, is throwing at us in the next few days. So with that, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, somebody just, do we know the courthouse, Steve, you mentioned that? Okay, so we're getting word that 24th JDC is closing tomorrow at 2 and also on Tuesday. And I know there's many conference calls going on um, right now as to further, further closures. We're trying to give you as many as we can. So, um, yes. I'm going to let, um, yeah, I'm going to let um, Entergy, Mr. Patrick Hamby, address that. All right, thank you. So, excuse me, regarding the power outages, it's a moving target depending on how the intensity manages through the storm correct, right, and where the path goes with the eastern side being the most severe. As far as predictions on what those are at this time, we do not have a solid number that we are able to share with the public. The best advice that we give is what I hit on on my speech, have a plan in place. If you're going to stay, have a very serious consideration that the possibility of an outage is very likely. It doesn't take much for it to stop a tree that could fall either on your house, the service line connected to your house, or even the distribution lines on the street. So have a plan in place. That's a personal decision. If you do stay, heed the warnings that Chief Tibbetts and I both uh, portrayed regarding generator safety. If you utilize that, make sure you have water in place. You just got to have that plan and stick to the plan. Thank you. Excuse me? Who should be making moves today? Today, I think the people making moves are at the southernmost part of the state with that mandatory evacuation. So customers rely on the parish to implement those mandatory evacuations, the volunteer evacuations, or voluntary rather, so that it's really up to the parish and then the customers to make that decision that aren't in those you know, low-lying southern regions to take it upon themselves to weigh the risk of staying and, you know, the risk of leaving too because there's risk there too. So just have that plan. Make sure you have supplies to keep your family safe. But even north of those evacuation orders, like we saw in St. Louis Lake Charles, you're going to see people who maybe are going to regret the fact that they stayed and then not have power, like you said, for up to three weeks. It could be that way. So uh, a point of reference for a Category 1 hurricane, we will have the majority of customers restored within seven days and the majority meaning 90%. However, 
you will have others that linger with significant damages that may go further than that. So be prepared for category one, it could be up to a week, right? Category two, it could be 10 days, and that's for the majority to get restored. And another thing to consider, when we say we're going to have everyone restored, that's everyone who can take power. If a tree falls on your home, or if it falls even on your service line, there's a, for overhead service going to your house, something called a weather head that pokes up like this on the top of your roof. If that gets damaged and pulled off, we cannot restore your power because it's not safe. It could be a fire hazard. It'll have to be repaired by a licensed electrician, inspections to be determined, um, and then we can restore power. So you have to consider all of those things. Even if you stay and we have all of our facilities rebuilt on your street, that does not mean that you can have power if you have damage to your home. Any other questions? Thank you. So just to reiterate, we do have a mandatory evacuation order for Grand Isle, and they need more prep time, and they, need, they just need more lead time. Lafitte will begin tomorrow a mandatory evacuation, but there's, they're just a drive, a quick drive to get within the levy protection system. So that's why you see the different time frames here. So maybe some people who live in Lafitte want to go to work tomorrow. They can come back home or not go back home and just quickly get within the levy protection system. Um, this is similar to COVID. You know, everybody has to have their own individual plan. If you're someone who has um, more health risks and being hot and not being in the air condition is going to cause other problems for you, then know that we're in a situation and, and you know, um, where you could lose electricity and who knows when it would. I mean, they're going to do their best, but this is just like COVID. You have to look at your individual risks and make those decisions, but this is a, a, a storm that we're all taking very seriously. Could even intensify, we hope not, but could even intensify and, and bring even stronger consequences to us. So we want to encourage everyone, you need to look at your own individual situation regarding, um, you know, can you be without power, okay? Any other questions? Okay, thank you all. Please stay in touch with your media. Please stay in touch with us, and everybody, please be safe.